Now, uh, again, remember that um, with respect to uh, this, right? If we're going to find the mechanical power produced at breakdown, we got to use the graph, which means we have to know, uh, well, we got to know NS so we can find the 80% speed point because this here is breakdown. And we also need to know the rate of torque so we can figure out what 175% of it is. Okay. So, uh, again, uh, we are not told the number of poles for this machine. We can sketch out the little table uh, or uh, we can... Oh, I got my cursor lost again. Okay. Uh, and so we can say that... At full load, we know that P out is approximately equal to 2.5 kilowatts or 2,500 watts. And that's a given. We also know then that speed is approximately 1,140 RPMs. And so, therefore, the rated torque, right, the 100% torque over there, uh, which is an output torque, and we can call it rated, if we wish, all right, is equal to 9.55 times P out. divided by n and so 9.55 multiplied by the 2500 watts and divided by uh, the 1140 rpms gives us the rated torque and that rated torque then is equal to 20.94 newton meters okay so remember what we're trying to do now we're trying to find p out at breakdown here and in order for us to do that uh, we need to know the torque at breakdown we can find that now 175 percent of that rated value we just calculated we also need to be able to figure out the speed and the speed we're given is n but remember that this is percent of NS. So we got to think about uh, what NS is from that. Okay, so let's go back to again that we know N is 1140 RPM. Uh, we know that N is less than NS. And we know that NS is 120 F divided by P. Now, uh, so if we think about that, there's an inequality that we can write. And uh, that inequality then becomes uh, N is less than 120 F divided by P. That allows us to say that P is less than 120 times F divided by N. And again, in the numerator, 120 multiplied by 60 hertz gives us 7200. And if we take that 7200 and divide it by the number we have, which is 1140, uh, we get uh, not a nice whole round number that we know P is, but uh, we come up with 6.316. And so we know that P is less than 6.316. And remember, P is poles per phase. 
Uh, and so if we think about what this means and the fact that uh, this is a squirrel cage induction motor, then we've got the basic idea here that P must be equal to six poles per phase. And then our calculation for NS, 120 times F divided by P, gives us 1200 RPMs. Okay, so 1200 RPMs. Now, let's think about how that relates to our graph. If this number is 1200, when we're running at full load right here, does that equate to 1140? Well, sure it does. There's about 5% slip there. 5% uh, of 1200 is exactly 60, and that's our slip speed, 60. And so in, 60 below in S, uh, that makes good sense. So we've made the right decision. Okay, so now if we know uh, what NS is, and we know what rate of torque is, when it comes to this point on the graph, we can come up with numbers for that. So our next step now is to consider what happens at breakdown. And we're told that breakdown is 80% of NS, so of course, this is breakdown. So at breakdown, the speed will be, and we're of course given this, 80% of NS of NS, so that means 0 0.8 times the 1200. And so you don't get the right answer if you use the 1140 here, right? Of course. And so uh, if he does that, you come up with 960 RPM. Now remember the uh, power produced here uh, will come from the torque formula. Uh, so we need the speed and the torque. The torque at breakdown comes from the graph. Uh, and so, you know, at breakdown here, we're at 175%. So 175% uh, of the rated value that we calculated for torque. And so that means 1.75 multiplied by uh, the 20.94 newton meters. And if you do that calculation, uh, you come up with uh, 36.65 newton meters. And so now uh, that we have those uh, from our torque equation, T equals 9.55 times, oh, let's call it P out here, uh, over in then the power uh, produced at breakdown will be equal to the speed at breakdown multiplied by the torque at breakdown and divided by our constant 9.55 and so that is equal to uh, 960 RPMs, uh, the 36.65 Newton meters, and again divided by the constant 9.55. And so the power uh, produced then at breakdown will be equal to uh, 3684 watts. Now, um, and so I find it uh, interesting now uh, to think about uh, the change in uh, these variables. And we got a change in power, a 
change in torque and a change in speed and the basic idea is that if we consider uh, what happened at full load uh, our power at full load was 2.5 kilowatts and at breakdown it was 30 uh, well, three point let's say six eight kilowatts and that represents an increase and if we do the math quickly uh, we got 3.68 subtract 2.5 and we're comparing that to 2.5 right because uh, that was our full load value and so that was an increase of uh, approximately 47 percent well, I'll try to squeeze that in there now uh, for the torque uh, we know that uh, we went from 100 percent to 175 percent and so that was an increase of 75 percent and for the speed uh, we went from 1140 uh, down to 960 and that was a decrease if we compare it to NS of 15 percent and so remember that you know one of the conclusions we want to draw here is that these three values are all related and so obviously they're they're related because we have the torque formula that relates them uh, but you know during periods of uh, deceleration or loading which we might call transient periods when the speed is changing the torque is changing the power is changing all three of these variables are uh, changing by different amounts and that's one of the conclusions that we need to draw from this with respect to understanding, right? Um, again, you know, the power, the torque, the speed, they're all related to each other, they're all changing, and they're all changing at different rates.